Okay, so what are the two normal tissues that you usually or you should see in the wound base? Because if you see them, you should be happy because you know that the process of closure has begun. But if you don't see them, you should try every means. Your management has to be directed in growing these two important tissues necessary for wound closure. Okay, so what are these? First is the granulation tissue. The second one is the epithelial tissue and we're going to talk about them one by one. So uh, when we're talking about the wound bed, okay, we're talking about the floor of the wound, or that's what we call the base of the wound. So therefore, uh, wound bed can be used interchangeably with the term wound floor or wound base. There's anything inside these demarcation lines in here. So this is the wound edges right there. And of course, the um, area immediately surrounding the wound is what we call the periwound. So if you see a documentation saying that uh, there is an erythema or there is a redness in the periwound, we are talking about this area in here. Or say, for example, we, you hear the word, there is a maceration on the periwound, we are talking about this area. This is the area immediately surrounding the wound. So granulation tissue is um, a new connective tissue um, and a microscopic new blood vessel. So remember that by definition, a granulation tissue is a new connective tissue and a microscopic new blood vessel. So their usual appearance, um, as seen in these pictures, is beefy, beefy, red, bumpy, and they are granular since they're named granulation tissue. So why are they red? So let's discuss this further. During the proliferative phase of healing, you know that there are different phases of healing, correct? So the formation of new blood vessel must happen. So there is what we call uh, the process of angiogenesis, okay? So um, let's see. That's what we call angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels. So angiogenesis occurs as uh, new capillary buds from the intact vessels adjacent to the wound extend to the wound base. So uh, like what I said, uh, there is uh, new capillary buds from intact blood vessels um, and they will now going to extend into the wound bed in here. And then the endothelial cells will proliferate. So the endothelial cells, those are the cells that are responsible in the formation of new blood vessels. So they create uh, new capillaries and uh, they will connect to form a network of vessels. And this complex now, okay, this is now what we call the granulation tissue. All right. So actually, um, the capillary loops uh, would like, uh, would look like, I should say, as, as small granules to the naked eye. So it explains like what I said earlier, it's named granulation tissue. Um, the granulation tissues actually first appear as a pink, uh, like a, a pale pink buds. Uh, as it fills with the new blood vessels later, it becomes bright red and uh, appears beefy. Okay. Now the production of granulation tissue is dependent on macrophage accumulation. So macrophages stimulate fibroblasts in, in growth. Then there is a deposition of the loose connective tissue and the formation of new capillaries in the wound. So the granulation tissue formation is also produced by low levels of bacteria. So you need bacteria to stimulate the formation of granulation tissue, but they can be inhibited by high levels of bacteria or high levels of bioburden. Ladies and gentlemen, you should remember that, that's what I want you to remember. You should remember that granulation tissue is found in total thickness or at least stage three wounds, not on partial thickness wounds. Uh, because the purpose of the granulation tissue is to fill the gap or the depth or the defect, okay? Uh, once the gap or the depth or the defect is filled, okay, another tissue now will appear to resurface the wound. So um, looking at the composition of the, of the granulation tissue, um, you could explain to your patient that it will never replace the structure of a normal skin. So uh, 
question for you is do you see granulation tissue on stage two ulcers or uh, stage two uh, pressure injuries the answer is no so when do you see them you see them on at least uh, full thickness or stage three uh, pressure injuries okay sometimes we run into a situation when you are not sure we are not sure if uh, the uh, red tissue that you are seeing on the wound base is a granulation tissue or a muscle so as you can see um, by appearance I want you to remember this appearance in here these are granulation tissue and this is how a muscle would look like so now um, to distinguish between the two uh, um, you could uh, do some palpation so when you palpate that's the best way to do uh or the best thing to do is to palpate the uh the tissue with your finger um and uh, a granulation tissue usually usually is soft and spongy and it will not jump or or um uh if pinched say for example if you're going to pinch this with your fingers it will not jump it will not twitch uh, but it may bleed why it may be bleed because like what i said it's just a network of new and fragile capillaries or blood vessels okay so if this is a muscle okay it is just really firm and resilient to pressure and it will not jump or twitch when pinched okay so this is the major difference between a granulation tissue with that of a muscle tissue just to make sure that you are describing the the tissue correctly so you should be able to distinguish between a granulation tissue uh, from that of a muscle okay